Hi, welcome to Conversations. My name is John LaRue. I'm the Manager of Collections and Exhibitions here at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery. And this is the first of a six-part series which we're going to be talking to artists who have new acquisitions in our permanent collection here at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery. So we're really fortunate today to have our good friend Dr. Jennifer Pazienza who is an artist and educator and uh, she's here to talk about this wonderful work which we just acquired this year called Summer Skies behind us. So it's the work of Jennifer and Jennifer Pazienza. Thanks for coming. Oh, thanks John. Thanks for having me. Thanks yeah. for having the work. Absolutely. So, so Summer Skies, this was done in 2010. Yes. At your studio. So tell us a bit about what we're looking at. Well, um, I live uh, on Keswick Ridge in New Brunswick and my studio is situated so that I can see from it the whole way down the Keswick Ridge Valley to Fredericton. Down at night I could see the cars going across the Westmoreland Bridge. And uh, locals might see that little notch in the painting as Curry Mountain, although I don't think of this painting as a place painting particularly, but that's a sort of little signature mark in the painting that would situate it for, for folks who are familiar with that. Yeah, the aspiring of the, the River Valley, and, and I know when yep. you you paint in Keswick Ridge, you built a studio there, and this wonderful studio, and it's been about 13 yeah. years now, but yeah. it's, it has uh, this whole wall which is essentially dematerialized, it's glass, and you have this beautiful vista into the landscape, yeah. and it's become a real inspiration for you too, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you talk here just about, I just I want to quote you from Mary's statement, you say, painting in my Keswick Ridge studio is significantly shaped by the tall windows that frame vast views of the St. John River Valley and the wild worlds just on the other side of the glass. Yeah. So tell us about how that vista inspires you because this is your vista looking out of sure. that studio. Um, I, I just need to back up a minute to childhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't stay there long. Yeah. But there were two significant places as a young person in my early formative years as, as an art making person. One was in my mother's garden mm -hmm. where the natural landscape really had an effect inside that urban context. Sure. And this was in New Jersey too, This was by in the New way, Jersey, right? that's yeah. right. And the other place was in the very front of the house, the porch that faced the street with French pane windows. And I would look out those windows and draw the same maple tree, <laughs> forget the cars and the, and the asphalt and the, and the concrete, but that lone maple tree. But I, the business of looking out windows started really early. So as much as I absolutely love the natural world and love being in it, when it's time for me to make work, I find, and I've only just begun to understand this, that looking through the window separates me a little bit. There's a kind of distance that happens between mm -hmm. me and other natures of the natural world through those windows. But also the windows help me frame mm -hmm. what I'm seeing. Sure. And, uh, and that's, um, that's how I've been doing things for some time. Yeah. So you think it's the inspiration of being on one side, looking out at something that has that Absolutely. meaning? Absolutely. And even, Johnny, before we built the studio in 2007, you may recall I was painting in the very front room of the house where I would be painting and I could walk back into my kitchen and cook and still see what I was painting. Mm -hmm. And in those early days, we moved in in 93, my first, ex my first show, uh, Between the Lines, those were the long, skinny, seven-inch high, seven, eight mm -hmm. feet long landscapes because the ridge, the immediate ridge was saying, hey, you know, you don't know me well enough to be painting squares yet, mm, which I had yeah. started with and then realized, no, this is wrong. Sure. And Jerry, you know, put up a two before and, and said, here. And so we put up a board and boom, I, off I went painting these long. Mm. And, and from that moment, Keswick Ridge began to teach me about the painter I am becoming, becoming. <laughs> would become, I'm still becoming. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, I see this. This is a real transitional work, I think. Uh, and you describe that yourself. And this was shown in the United States. It's been on tour. It was shown in Miami. To, yeah. to strong acclaim, but you said, yeah. you told me a story where that moment when you took it to a foreign country where people didn't know this landscape, yeah. they were moved by this nature. It has this sort of universal appeal of, of yeah. sky and space and vista yeah. that, that really speaks to people, which is yeah. one of the reasons why I'm so drawn to this. Can you yeah. talk about that a bit, that moment? Yeah, sure. You know, like I'm sure like a lot of my peers, art, art, artist friends, um, there are moments when you just doubt yourself. And, you know, just because it's a big painting doesn't mean it's a good painting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, as much as I love New Brunswick and Fredericton and, and absolutely my life on Keswick Ridge, the opportunity to take this painting out of this setting 
to a venue with all the glitz and glam that Miami is during Miami Art Week, how will it fare there? Was mm -hmm. the, the question. We talk about art fairs, right? How did it fare? Sir, so Shy New Brunswicker goes to oh, Big City. Oh, my what, God. Yeah, right. You know, I know. Yeah. And there it was on the main wall with other works. And to a person, regardless of age, gender, ethnicity, geographic location, they would come in and just say, oh. I can breathe. I want to step into this. One young man, all tatted and pierced, God love him, beautiful long lashes. Actually, he lay down on the floor to like look up and be in the landscape. And that um, was so affirming for me. That was just, it's like, right, Jennifer, you know, this is, this is what you do. This is how you do it. You're blessed to do it. And just keep going. Just <laughs> That's so, so I know your studio in Keswick Ridge too. Yeah. It's where you did, but it's also a refuge. And it's Absolutely. a beautiful spot. I've been out yeah. there many times, and, yeah. and I'm thrilled every time I go there. Yeah. But this work, yeah. which is a piece of that, has given other people refuge. What, uh, that's my hope. That's absolutely a great point, and and that's my hope. And mm -hmm. if I mean we've talked about this before, you and I, Johnny. There aren't any uh, power lines. There mm -hmm. aren't any tractors and so forth because I'm it, or surrounded by farming mm -hmm. things. You could see some of the clear cutting that's gone on in the landscape. But the point is, one might say, well, Jennifer, what are you doing? You're helping to reproduce a romanticized landscape and blah, blah, blah. No. What I'm trying to do is say, look what could be lost in a moment. Mm -hmm. And if I could just say a bit further, I mean, we talk about mother nature. Well, what if nature was gendered father nature? Would we be doing the same things to the land and the environment and so forth? I mean, I'm being playful here, but sure. in a serious way, there's an argument to be made. This, the size of this painting mm -hmm. grew out of a genuine poetic moment. It wasn't me waking up one morning and saying, I'm going to make a big, you know, diptych. You know, it, it came out of a moment where the, the, the walls in the studio, which you referred to, mm -hmm. called to me and said, hey, you know, you can make, you can use us. You don't just need your easel. Like, you can make bigger paintings mm -hmm. here. You've got room. And I started with the left-hand side. And as I was working, it wanted to keep going. And the I intention was this would be one painting. Absolutely, one painting, one yeah. eight by six foot painting. And I, I said to Jerry again, I said, Jerry, I, I think this painting has to, he said, well, Jennifer, you have another canvas, put it there, make it a diptych. And yeah. I said, can I do that? Like, who am I to make such a big honking painting? And he, my husband who does not practice yoga, <laughs> said, who are you not to make that painting, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. And that was like, it was liberating. It was absolutely liberating. And, and off I went. I mean, there's more to this around. I mean, we could talk about, you know, the BP oil spill was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking about that. I knew about it. My, my dear departed mother-in-law was dying. I finished it the, the day that she died. I got the call that she died the next day. There's another story attached, personal things attached mm -hmm. here. But this is where it... Conclu this where is it the conclusion of that after that one, well, it, I mean, one panel. I mean, I'm... I'm always impressed by this. I mean, it has, it's so rich in metaphor. It's very much, I don't want to say photographic because it's not meant to be, but it's no. very much that place, that sky at that time, but that universality of it, it has that metaphor of something bigger, yeah. that sort of vastness. It's framed, like you say, but it's, it is the universe. Yeah. It's, it's meaning in space and, right. and heaven and earth. It's all of these things. Yes. And, and so it's, it's wonderful that, that those were there. They're all part of it, I think. Yes, thank you. And yeah. some will say, well, but gee, I'm on Kessel Ridge. I never knew the sky was that big. Well, I'm taking a particular view. My, my studio sits up. I'm looking down river. And you're right. In this work, the land is important. That it's there to ground you, mm -hmm. but imminence and transcendence um, I think is more the issue yeah. here, or the connected. Sure, and it's uh, interesting because it reads as something very heavy and sort of very permanent, but it's also this wisp of a millisecond. That it is ten a seconds moment. later. This change is this um, is this a landscape or a skyscape? Yes, it's both. It's anything. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, you know, I, and maybe it's neither. Maybe it's um, just a spiritual work that else. happens to use the sky and the land. Well, I, that's you know, how I, it's a I, poem. Really, I really see this. I think, I think yeah. it's transcendent, and without seeming sort of arrogant, I can maybe say that because it's not my no. work, but I do find this a transcendent work. And, and to you, Thank you, and I know you're quite humble about your work at first, but I think, do you, can you admit now, 11 years later, that, that there's some transcendence happening in this? Yeah, actually, um, <laughs> this is a little difficult for me to talk about, but if I may just for a moment, mm -hmm. I had mentioned my mother-in-law. I had been working on this. This was the, in the Landscape Love and Longing show that opened that September at the UMB Art Center. Mm -hmm. And I literally finished this like about August 15th. And what had happened, we had, 
We had just come back from, from the States, visiting my mother-in-law, celebrated her birthday, um, came home, and we got a call that she was failing. And I went out to the studio, and the upper left-hand panel was just a nightmare. There are probably seven, eight layers of paint under that. You'd mm -hmm. have no idea. I just, somehow I moved this way, and then I lost the connection between the two of them. And that left-hand corner was just driving me crazy. And it was a hot day, mid-August, and I just looked up to it, and I said, you know, like, and I usually like, what do you want from me? And Nancy's voice, I kid you not, Nancy's voice came into my head and said, lighten up, Jen. <laughs> like, really? She, yeah. And I was like, literally, I, it was dark underneath here. It was this dark brooding kind of thing. Yeah. And I literally lightened it up. And like, there it is. And the sweat was pouring off me. And I put down my brushes and I thought, that's it. And mm. we went out, Jerry and I went out for wings and a drink and came back. <laughs> and then you. the next morning, we got the call that she had died. Wow. So, so I, again, in that, that, so that, that may sound like, like crazy, airy fairy stuff, but. The way I think about things, um, and you know, when you're in the moment and living in the moment, and things are impressing upon you, if you're, if if, and I can't take credit for this, if I'm awake enough to pay attention and be open to it and let it guide me, that's my practice, mm -hmm. and that's that moment I will I carry with me through I have carried with me through every painting since, if mm -hmm. I can, to remind myself of that, to stay present, to stay with what's. Yeah. What's what I'm being um, guided by and okay. guiding toward? And guided have toward. not so, and you don't force your message, your intention on this. You also let it lead you, and let circumstance and landscape and the sky, the climate, everything lead you. Yep. At that point, Johnny, right? I so appreciate artists who can work, and I mean this in the finest sense, in a conceptual way, who can think about things initially and guide, you know, and work in a particular way. Not that they aren't guided by intuition too. Don't misunderstand mm -hmm. me. Not to diminish that. But for me, the understanding and the conceptualizing happens after. For me, the moment I start to enforce my will mm -hmm. <laughs> upon my work, <laughs> with a, I get in such trouble. Yeah. I just, I do. And, and that's just, and it's taken me so long to believe that that is um, a viable way of working, that it's, it, that it's a respectable way of work. That is how I work. And that's it. And I no longer, as you said, I no longer apologize for it yeah. because that's how I make. That's how I work. Absolutely. That's it. You're talking about the the landscape here below and this mm -hmm. idea of, uh, of of realizing something is very precious that perhaps we don't quite understand. You have a poem I know you want to read, which relates to oh. this, which is well. If, if you, you read that, and if maybe you want you it, talk sure. About it, sure. This is um, from a book, Nine Gates: Entering the Mind of Poetry, uh, essays by Jane Hirschfield. <clears throat> and the reason why I love it, it's about how. Um, this is about making poetry, just like a written verse might mm. be. But this is a poem written by Cheswaf Miwash called Gift. And it goes, a day so happy, fog lifted early, I worked in the garden. Hummingbirds were stopping over honeysuckle flowers. There was no thing on earth I wanted to possess. I knew no one worthy of my envying him. Whatever evil I had suffered, I forgot. To think that once I was the same man, that did, not, that did not embarrass me. In my body, I felt no pain. When straightening up, I saw the blue sea and sails. What Hirschfeld goes on to talk about in the book is how Miwash is treating us to this moment of absolute light and clarity with no thing, no negative anything, energy happening. Mm. And then how in a moment that can be lost, that the shadow can come in and can be lost. This is how I see this work. This so is about light. About reveling in these moments Absolutely. of meaning and depth. Absolutely, and, and, and understanding, and perhaps it has to do with you know, my early formation, experiencing loss at such a young age mm -hmm. that I gravitate toward this kind of thing or it resonates with me in the way that it does. But that idea, and we all know it, I mean, we're living in a pandemic. The world can change in a mm -hmm. moment. And that's partly, I think, what's going on here. And obviously with the, um, the loss of my mother-in-law at the same time with this, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it ain't rocket science. No. Well, thank you so much, Look, for sharing this work with us. And we're really excited to share this. We've spoken to you. This is going to be, when we reopen, it'll be central in our Atlantic Canadian Gallery next to the Grandfather mm -hmm. Guillaume Canoe. I'm delighted. Canoe. So when people walk it, they're, they're walking yeah. into this space. And I yeah. think this, this idea of, of transcendence and, and meaning, and that people can also bring their own experience to this, Absolutely. which I know you're very open to. Uh, no, it, it's, it's my prayer and hope that people will come and with the landscapes of their lives that they bring, mm -hmm. right, see it, make sense of it, go away with it, and see how it works in their lives for them. 
You know, that's the poetry of it. Yeah. Jennifer, thank you. Thank you for sharing this with us. And I I always enjoy talking to you. So this (laughs) is great. So thanks so much for joining us for conversations. And we're going to do these again once a month with artists and with works in a permanent collection. And we're really excited to share it with you. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon.